The English word ego is simply Latin for I. Your ego is literally all about you. It's the word for I. It's the word for me. Egoic thoughts, motives, emotions, and behaviors where I, me, and mine take the center stage. We need ego. If you don't have ego, then you don't think of yourself. When I am thinking about what I'm going to have for breakfast, that is an egoic thought. I need to think about what I'm going to have for breakfast so that I can feel nourished and happy and so forth. Egoic has nothing to do with being egotistical, which is now what we think of when we think of ego. To be egotistical is when we evaluate oneself better than others. Egotistical can be egoic, but self-critical people can be egoic too. Because at the end of the day, you're just thinking about you. Ego is how you see yourself. It's how you present yourself and how you become so others will like you or accept you. Ego is who we tell ourselves we are or who other people have told us who we are. In many ways, ego helps us to survive. It helps us to fit in and it helps us get what we want. These are ultimately all attachments. Our attachments to certain identities, beliefs, expectations, roles, programming, and how you want others to see you is also all ego. So I, ego, and then everything that we attach next to I is ego as well. Doing the work helps you zoom out and become the perpetual observer of your life so that we can reduce suffering and become more present. When we focus on the present, we release ourselves from having to play into a certain role, identity, or expectation. That's all ego. So when we do the work that helps us focus on the present, and then we're able to let our attachments go, we release all of that that allows us to be fully surrendered to the now. When we feel triggered, when we feel irritated, when we feel scared, resistant, that is the ego. The ego wants to hold on control. It wants to hold on to the story. It wants to be right. And so doing the work allows us to witness the ego and realize that it's your stories and your attachments that are keeping you from getting what you actually want. That is when we can find the highest and truest versions of ourselves. Let's talk about what it looks like when the ego gets in the way. When the ego gets in the way, first things first, you have to be right when you should just take radical responsibility. Always having to get the last word in, always having to make your point, getting easily butthurt and offended if someone corrects you, getting angry and spiraling into pain when things don't go your way, ignoring, dismissing, or resenting feedback that will help you grow, preoccupation with wanting to win or be seen as better than others, comparison mode, judging others, judging yourself, never being satisfied or just being unable to connect to gratitude genuinely, being highly opinionated and always having to put in your two cents, defensiveness, feeling attacked, sulking, victim mentality, feeling like you never get your way, rescuer mentality, people pleasing, wanting to be needed, and then the persecutor, demanding attention, needing respect, and so forth. <laughs> How to check the ego. Just do the work. Peace of mind is the new success. Because at that point, you're always present. You trust in all the goodness. You have abundance mindset. Opportunities come to you. You trust you're exactly where you need to be. At every point in your journey, you already know that you're thriving and successful. We got to become very, very, very aware. Recognize when you are being triggered because you get triggered and then you automatically start going into your stories and then you start projecting your shit and then you start having transference and you start spewing and you start reacting. That's all ego. That's not your highest self. That's not the truth. Recognize when you are having transference or projecting your shit. Recognize when you're making it a thing. That's ego stepping in. Take radical responsibility.